Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga. And today, we are going to be examining the ever beautiful concept of Nen. Now, Nen is the underlying power system featured in Hunter x Hunter and is a force of versatility that can be applied to seemingly infinite outcomes, ranging from basic invocations to out of this world maddening abilities. In fact, according to the fabric of Hunter x Hunter, the use of Nen, whether consciously or subconsciously, is responsible for producing exceptional individuals in this world, such as athletes and geniuses. As such, Nen is significantly more complex than most shonen power systems, but we're going to be doing our best to break it down in its simplest elements here, and then maybe later Ron will have a much more advanced video, but trust me, even the simple elements take a lot to understand. So Nen begins with the idea that every living being possesses their own brand of life energy, which is referred to as aura in the series. This aura is produced from all parts of the body via various aura nodes, and it has the tendency to flow together, creating a mass of traveling energy. However, this generally happens without the awareness of said living being, which results in a slow leak of aura escaping the body from the top of the head, which can be described as kind of like steam escaping from the opening of a boiling kettle. However, one can learn to halt this leakage and control their aura, which is the beginning of the art known as Nen. Now, learning Nen starts with the essential step of understanding how to manually control the opening and closing of one's aura nodes. And the traditional way to achieve this is through a slow process of meditation and bodily enlightenment. However, if you, like me, are incredibly impatient, then there is a more frowned upon method, which is colloquially referred to as an initiation. This method involves forcing one's aura nodes open through a rapid influx of aura, being forced into them by another party who can already control their own aura. This method is particularly dangerous because it can lead to heavy exhaustion as well as permanent damage. And in fact, in the world of Nen, this methodology is even referred to as an attack due to the potential for it to be performed with malicious intent. Although this rough methodology is not the only way to go about forcing aura nodes open, as it has been shown that an experienced Nen user can open a student's aura nodes via the use of a simple Hatsu. Now, what is a Hatsu, you ask? Well, that is a wonderful question. And it leads us to the Shingen Ryu School of Kung Fu, founded by a certain Isaac Netero. And it teaches its students four major principles and applications of Nen, those being Ten, Zetsu, Ren, and Hatsu. And to go through all of those, starting with Ten, this is the mastery of keeping one's aura nodes open, but concentrating the flow of aura around the body rather than having it leak and dissipate from it. Due to Ten focusing on maintaining your aura, users of this basic principle will increase longevity thanks to the hoarding of their own life energy rather than letting it escape. Furthermore, Ten can also act as a very basic defense against emotional Nen attacks, as well as limited protection against physical Nen attacks. Then we have the next major principle of Zetsu, which takes this a step further and focuses on suppressing the flow of aura altogether by manually closing one's aura nodes. In terms of practical usage, it is generally performed to mask one's aura from other Nen users, as well as to increase your own sensitivity to the aura of others. However, rather notably, when a user is in a state of Zetsu, then they are at their most vulnerable because they have no aura to defend them, and even the most basic of Nen-infused attacks or abilities can cause fatal damage to the unprotected minds and bodies of those engaged in Zetsu. Next up is Ren, which aims to use aura offensively by projecting a large amount in an outward and explosive manner, thus providing the user with enhanced physical abilities, as well as an easily accessible pool of aura required for engaging in more advanced Nen abilities. And finally, we have the aforementioned Hatsu, which is probably best described as the user's very own personal expression of Nen, like a manifestation and an application of aura, resulting in a truly unique ability that generally adheres to the natural affinity of a Nen user. For example, Killua's ability to seemingly create electricity out of thin air is a Hatsu that he was able to develop by transmuting his aura into a substance that mimics the properties of electricity. Now that I've mentioned the T word being transmutation, this seems to be a good time to delve into our next layer of the Nen world, which is that in addition to the basic applications of Nen that I've listed here, every living being in this world actually has a natural affinity for one of the following six different aura types, which are as follows. First up, enhancement. Using this brand, an individual is able to use their aura to increase the natural abilities of an object or even one's own body. So it's great to strengthen your offense and also wonderful to strengthen your defense as well. A very balanced category all around, although it does mostly get applied to boost one's basic combat prowess. For example, one of our main protagonists, Gone Freaks, is a natural enhancer and he applied that principle to develop an attack named Rock, which basically gives him a super powered fist. Although admittedly, it is a bit more complicated than that and Gone does invoke some more advanced principles of Nen, which we will get into in a bit. But next up is transmutation. 
So just as with the example I mentioned earlier featuring Killua, a transmuter is able to change the properties of their aura to mimic those of something else. And this can be just about anything, but it doesn't end with simple imitation as a transmuter is also capable of choosing selective properties of the substance they wish to mimic and can even craft their own personalized substance. A great example of this would be Hisoka a natural transmuter whose bungee gum Hatsu is able to mimic the properties of both rubber and gum, although it is infinitely more flexible and sticky than either substance would be in reality. Moving along, we have Conjuration, and practitioners of this ability are able to morph their aura into a physical and independent object according to their own desired laws and principles. Now, this can often be mistaken for transmutation, which I just went over, but the key difference here is that conjurers can create independent objects. And to illustrate this, Kite would be a great example, who invokes Conjuration to create his weapons that spawn from his crazy slots ability that are put to use as independent objects, rather than a substance to be wielded as with transmuters. The next category is Emission, and users of this type have easy access to detaching pure aura from their bodies, leading to a whole host of long-range Nen options. Furthermore, emitters are not to be confused with conjurers, as emitters are only capable of separating pure forms of aura rather than creating physical objects. And a cool example of this would be Razor, who rather simply emits a ball of aura and uses it as a long-range weapon slash fun gameplay mechanic when engaged in a dodgeball match. The fifth brand is that of manipulation, and those considered manipulators possess the power to control both living and non-living things, including or constructs. And all of this is accessible by applying their own aura. So basic applications of manipulation can be achieved by pouring one's aura into an existing object, not to be confused with one conjured by Nen. And to illustrate, we have Illumi Zoldix needles, which are infused with aura and are then able to control individuals in a wide variety of ways upon insertion of the needles into their bodies. And just very briefly, mind control in general is a massive subgenre of manipulation and can be broken down into further subcategories that I won't go into here, but they include soliciting, coercive, pseudo-coercive, and the ever mysterious and longly worded diffusive induction type. But finally, we have probably what is the most insane aura type, which is that of a specialist, which can be summarized as any form of Nen ability that does not fit into the previous five categories. Now, at first, specialist would seem like just a miscellaneous category for any application of aura that does not fit into the established groups, and that is true to some extent, with a good example of this being Neon Nestrad, who had the lovely Ghostwriter ability, where she could predict people's futures through cryptic poetry once certain conditions were met. However, specialists are not limited to miscellaneous powers, and they can quite blatantly break the core rules of Nen and its applications. So with a proficient specialist, you can essentially throw the rules of Nen out the window because you can never predict what they will be capable of achieving. Now, as mentioned before, every individual is born with an affinity for one of these six types. However, that does not mean that they can never access the others. Far from it, actually. So let's say, for example, that you, like Gon Freaks, were born as an enhancer. That would mean that should you learn Nen, then you have the potential to be 100% efficient in any pure enhancement invocation of Aura. However, as we expand to your adjacent typings, that percentage drops to 80, and taking another step further out drops down to 60, until you reach the typing furthest away from you, which leaves you with a 40% potential efficiency. And all of this is true except in the case of specialization, actually. Because here's the thing, if you are not a specialist, then it is impossible for you to access that brand of aura. However, because Nen is a Nen, there is always a possibility of becoming a specialist later in life, with its two adjacent categories of manipulators and conjurers having the highest chance of doing so. But specialization aside, a proficient Nen user can more or less access every other brand of aura, but to varying degrees of success. And once again, you can see this in Gon, who is a natural enhancer, but also has attacks based on using its adjacent categories being transmutation and emission. And with this in mind, using Nen immediately becomes a lot more complicated because not only can you access every class bar specialization, but you can also use these aura applications in combination with one another to manifest a unique Hatsu. And in fact, most experienced Nen users will smoothly blend any number of these disciplines together. For instance, Xeno Zoldic's Dragon Dive Hatsu is only possible through using emission to create the dragon shaped aura and transmutation to imbue it with its destructive properties. And then going even crazier, we can take a brief look at Karapika's Judgment Chain ability, which is a combination of three different typings, being Conjuration, Emission, and Manipulation, which basically has the effect of bringing a chain into existence, which upon striking an opponent, can force a condition of Karapika's choosing onto them. But taking a step back just for a second, all of these hearts who are not the be-all and end-all of Nen, as the four major principles can be expanded upon for more advanced use in a variety of different ways. Firstly, a user can adapt the principle of Ren and focus it specifically around their eyes, create a technique known as Gyo. The benefit of this concentration of aura is being able to see the aura of other Nen users, even those can 
concealed by Ian. Speaking of, Ian is an advancement of Zetsu, which renders it users aura masked from other Nen users. But unlike Zetsu, it does not stop the aura flow, but rather it just conceals it, making it extraordinarily appealing to those who don't wish to draw attention to themselves, but also don't wish to leave themselves defenseless either. Then there's also N, which is a combination of Ten and Ren, allowing a radial expansion of aura that has the result of giving the user the ability to sense everything within it. And we can keep compounding these abilities, in which case we end up with stuff like Ko, which combines Ten, Ren, Zetsu, Hatsu, and Gyo to effectively make one particular part of a user's body incredibly powerful at the cost of leaving everything else entirely defenseless. But you get the idea, there is a huge field of advanced techniques out there to pursue. However, more importantly, it should be noted that Aura is not a simple scientific substance, and it can be quite easily manipulated by personal factors such as emotion. This is because Aura is directly tied to its user, and as a result, it is heavily heavily influenced by their emotional state. In fact, one commonly viewed phenomenon occurs when a person channels their aggression into their aura and deploys it at a target through the basic principle of Ren. This is known as the bloodlust phenomenon and makes a target feel physically antagonized by said bloodlust as if it were physically palpable. And desires like this can even subconsciously mold aura and bestow people with abilities that they never actively trained for, such as when Bisky became capable of changing her appearance through the simple but extreme desire of wishing for her body to change over a period of many, many years. And despite being a direct representation of life force, the aura of a Nen user does not necessarily disappear after death. In fact, on several occasions, it has been shown to be quite the opposite and grant exponential power, usually as the result of a user feeling an overwhelming emotion prior to them passing away. So for example, this was displayed quite clearly when Nefapito's Topsakora took control of her corpse and proceeded to attack Gon due to the feelings of loyalty Nefapito had for the Chimera and King Meroem. And in fact, certain Nen users have even gone so far as to making their own death an act of requirement for a certain ability, such as Hisoka programming his bungee gum Hatsu to restart his heart after death. But speaking of conditions, these are a very important aspect of Nen, bringing up the idea that Nen is directly tied to emotions and desires. So as a result, users are entirely capable of bargaining with their own powers by saddling them with strict activation requirements in order to invoke greater power. And a prime candidate of this, who we've already mentioned in this video, would be Karapika, whose requirement to use the chain jail technique is that he can only perform it against a member of the Phantom Troop. So should Karapika violate this condition, it will result in his instantaneous death. However, when performed under the right conditions, chain jail is an incredibly overpowered technique that will leave essentially any member of the Phantom Troop entirely incapable of dealing with it. The conditions don't have to be quite as extreme as death though, as demonstrated by Knuckle, whose activation requirement for Hakawara is simply to land a punch on an opponent. But of course, the more complex conditions and restrictions placed on an ability, then well, it will generally result in significantly greater power upon meeting them. And one of the most intriguing examples of this would be the bandit secret Hatsu developed by Crawler Lucifer. Now this power basically allows Crawler to steal the Nen ability of another user. However, he has to meet the following four conditions before being able to do so. Firstly, Crawler must witness the desired ability in action with his own eyes. Secondly, he must ask the user about the ability and then have his question answered by the user. Then, and probably the most difficult condition, his victim's palm needs to touch the handprint on the cover of Bandit Secret. And finally, all of this needs to be accomplished within one hour. So those four criteria are absolutely ridiculous conditions to satisfy, but if Krolo is able to achieve it, then he can blatantly steal the Hatsu of other people. And you know, despite knowing all of this, Nen is still an incredibly mysterious subject and full of a lot of depth. So for example, while all Nen abilities are based on their user, this does not necessarily mean that all Nen abilities are unique and there are a lot of recognizable subcategories to classify more commonly generated Hatsu, such as cloning, creating Nen beasts, Nen curses, or even exorcism. And honestly, these are concepts that require a ton of time to delve into, and I may make an entire video on them if all of you are interested to hear about that sort of stuff in a bit more depth. But as for right now, all I can say is that this series has consistently introduced new and interesting methods of Nen use. It is a vast vast well of infinite possibilities that is limited only by the needs and creativity of its user. And that very much makes it quite possibly the most versatile power system in all of fiction. But that pretty much does it for the basics of Nen. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the New World Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe, because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own thoughts on Nen. This has been the New World Review, and I'll see you next time.